This week, Professor Kivutha Kibwana, the governor of Makweni, revealed his intentions to vie for the top seat in 2022. I've not sampled many reactions to his announcement, but I know how it has gone in the past. Presidential aspirants in Kenya come prejudged. They have to fit a certain narrative and they have to belong to certain descriptions. In short, the presidency in Kenya is a tailor-made affair in which the electorate and not the candidates get their measurements taken. In fact, the other day, there was a seemingly hilarious tweet that captured our problem. As a nation, the person quipped, and I quote, Professor Kibwana is not corrupt enough to be a president. Other reactions include, he is not the kingpin of his tribe. He's not wealthy enough. He's too good to be president. He's an outsider. Only the middle class will vote for him. He's only popular on social media. You've heard these, right? Now, it is not in my place right now to discuss whether Professor Kibwana is qualified to be president or not. But a quick look at those reactions reveals what I see as a challenge to the very notion of self-rule. That we marked just a month ago on Madaraka Day. You see, ever since the restoration of multi-party politics in 1992, presidential elections have, in my view, been more of an electoral hostage crisis than it has been an exercise in self-rule and the freedom of choice that comes with elections. When it comes to presidential elections, an ordinary Kenyan would rather not exercise self-rule, but instead wait for instructions or signs and other non-verbal signals on how to exercise that right of choice. I call it a hostage crisis because of the difficulty Kenyans find themselves in whenever there is a conversation about presidential candidates. How is it self-rule when one cannot think for themselves about basic choices like who to vote for? I've watched some exciting elections around the world, some that come correctly branded too close to call, not because of the factors known to be at play in Kenya, but because of real ideologies, choices before the voters. No prizes for guessing, for example, that in Kenya, an election would revolve around certain names and certain families. The Kenyatas and the Odingas, for example, have dominated the narrative for the last six decades. And even as we head to 2022, there will be Kenyans who will not be looking beyond that frame for choices. That is the hostage crisis I'm talking about. It is that paralyzing feeling amongst Kenyan voters that makes new entrants to the presidential race non-starters even before they present themselves. The unlikely candidate always seems to get the same treatment. They are received and perceived as being in the wrong place and doing the wrong thing. At least that is how Professor Wangari Mathai was made to feel in 2002, and even the maverick Abduba Dida in 2013, who was seen as an assault on normalcy. Despite the concept of self-rule, the voter's mind has been trained to operate within the limits of ethnicity, class, family, or other similar defined parameters. I'm not even persuaded that the framing of the 2022 race by some as dynasties versus hustlers will change anything. This is because the voter is coming to the scene with that set mind. It's a bit like turning up for a football game with both hands tied behind your back. So dynasties versus hustlers may just provide a delicious prelude, a colorful campaign, almost ideological in framing, before the chickens come home to roost. A veteran politician could not have put it any better in a recent conversation about the country's politics. He said, all the potentials, pretensions we have right now about ideology, parties, and even the whole issue of hustlers versus dynasties is like painting a donkey with the colors of a zebra. But when the rains finally come in 2022, the donkey will be revealed for what it is. I hope that he was wrong. That is my take tonight.